So this is the totality of God's personality. He is totally, sovereignly committed that truth be free. And this is where the Calvinists get all screwed up. They don't understand that this is the basis. They understand that God wills a bad thing in order for it to exist. God does have to will it. But why? Because he wills it to be free. The Calvinists would straitjacket everybody, including God, and say, well, because God forces it to be. No, he doesn't. He, force, he, he ensures freedom. He insists that everything be free to be what it is and have its own life and its own course and its own effects. And that's why hell lasts forever. You don't want to believe God? What goes with that? You're rejecting the one who gives you your soul, creates your soul at birth, and gives you your first, first breath. You don't want to believe in him? What crime is worse than that? Okay, well, here's hell. And even in hell, he doesn't let you die. You know why? Because you might change your mind and believe in him. Because he's ensured your freedom to do that because Christ paid for everybody. Not just the elect. Because God elected everybody to be born. That's how you got a soul. Because God created it at birth. So God elected you at birth. And he elects you at the second birth. There are two elections. Actually four. Christ and then there's the eternal state. You know, the election of the angels, I'm sorry. The fourth one, the angels. Which is really first. First in time. Well, first is Christ. Second is the angels in terms of time. Third is your physical birth. And fourth is your, your you know, eternal birth. In the moment you believe in Christ, John 3.16. John 3.16. Okay. All right? So this is the hardest part, part four of God's personality. He elects truth to be free. Free to be bad, free to be good. Now, he elects truth to be free and to have its free effects. Okay, so if I believe in Christ, though, I don't have any power to make that have any effect. God gives me this offer. Believe in my son and you're forever saved. Okay, I believe that. Whoopee. You know, I believe a can of tomatoes is a good thing too. I don't have any power over the tomatoes. I believe in them. It's the ability of the tomatoes to make my belief have any value. Even a can of tomatoes. Okay. So how much more God? So if I believe in Christ, it's up to God still to do something with that belief. It's the merit of the object. That's another thing the Calvinists are screwed up about, Calvinists and the Catholics. This is why I keep saying that their, their theology is below kindergarten. They're retarded. If I believe in a can of tomatoes, whoopee, I believe. I don't get anything for believing it. I have no, my belief has no power. The power is in the can of tomatoes. If I believe in the can of tomatoes, I go to the store, I buy the tomatoes, and I eat them. But the power is still in the tomatoes, not in my belief. There's no merit in my belief. The merit's in the tomatoes. If I'm stupid and I believe wrongly about the tomatoes, and the tomatoes have a negative merit, then that's going to hit me. Okay, if I believe in Christ, Christ is total merit, made so by the Holy Spirit. Christ didn't make himself meritorious. And he was perfect the whole time. Get that? All he did was believe and the Holy Spirit did something to him. All we do is believe and the Holy Spirit does something to us. Got that? The merit is in the object. All right. So that's also part of truth. Because that particular truth is a belief in someone or something else. And now it's a question of what does God call, want to make true about that object. If the object is tomatoes, he wanted to make sure that it had lycopene and vitamin A and vitamin C and low in calories and taste good. Mm, tomatoes. Give my kingdom for a load of tomatoes, okay? He made tomatoes taste good and be good. He has to will those tomatoes to do that, okay? He has to will to save you, okay? He has to choose it or it ain't going to happen. You can believe until you're blue in the face, but unless God says, okay, well, I want to do something with that belief, then nothing's going to happen, just like he had to do with the tomatoes. Okay, but he wanted to make the tomatoes valuable. He wanted to save you, and he wanted to make it a condition. You believe in my son who paid everything, or you go to hell, and if you don't like that, too bad. 
God makes the conditions. God sets the conditions. The conditions are God's conditions. It's monergism, dingbats, no matter what you do. Quit trying to credit your works. Even if you are 100% perfect, it's still monergistic. There's nothing you contribute. You do things, you say things, you want things, and relative to some other human being, you can try to call merit. But remember what it says in uh, Romans 4.2? There's no merit before God, ever. Even Christ didn't claim merit. Remember what he said? No one's good but God. That's what he said to the rich young ruler. Okay, and Christ is perfect. He would know what good is. All right, so those are the hardest things. This part four is the hardest thing to accept about God's personality. Anything that happens, bad, good, or indifferent, he had to will it and ensure its occurrence. He has to ensure its effects. He basically ensures its life. All right, and then God's own nature is what he wills it to be. And he can change his mind anytime, honey. You don't like that? Become an atheist. So much for part four and probably five and six of God's personality.